I'm Jennifer and um, we are continuing with our sew along for the Jackie sports bra. Today we are actually going to be constructing the strap. So stay tuned and you'll see all of the videos on how to create the strap. So this is what we're going to be using to construct our straps. Um, so I've gone ahead and I've laid everything out and I double check this thing is actually does not stretch so this is going to be my stabilized layer. Um, you could easily just cut a piece of muslin like actual muslin or anything woven to use to help just keep it from stretching because we don't want it to stretch. Um, it's going to be flexible enough um, with how we're attaching it with the strap elastic. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I actually got my thread all done and actually I don't know if you saw this before um, but in Guterman thread and I think Mettler the top this piece actually comes off and so you can store pins and stuff inside of it it only works so if you haven't removed the um, what do you call it the the, the paper off the end because um, there is a hole in the end but hey you can use this to store to store stuff kind of cool Sure, it has other purposes as well. So one thing I want to do is I'm going to line up my right side, my basically my wrong side to the foam. So we kind of have these lined up. And if you have actually like kind of a double-sided um, fusible or a spray adhesive, you could always adhese, adhese, <laughs> ad adhese these together. Um, so I'm just going to put a few pins in here to kind of hold it in place. Um, and I'm actually going to baste it together first. Um, I think it's going to be better. It will work better. Um, the, the problem with doing the, um, anything with stretch when you're going to use the overlock machine, because I was going to sew this with the overlock, but you can with it being straight if you're really stabilizing this. Um, is it, But you're working with stretch layers. So you want to make sure that they don't get messed up as they go through the machine. And the best way to do that is actually just to hand baste it together. So again, pinning this so my wrong side is facing my foam. So we have the right side facing up. Let's see, it just it, it wiggle, wiggles and wobbles all around for us. And this will just stabilize it. Now you can do this actually on the straps of any of my um, sports or really any pattern. But in my sports wear patterns, you can also do this. It'll help secure it. And if you are having issues with the strap stretching too much, um, you can always go in and um, stabilize it like I like we would with muslin. So now I'm going to line this up to the edge. So I know that's right size, and I've already got pins in there. But the pins were to hold the bottom two layers together. I'm just going to throw a couple pins in here to strategically get it because it wants to move on me. And then I'm going to just do kind of a quick little basting stitch on the edge. Now what I'm going to end up doing is so I want to try and line up my edges. Of course that one didn't get lined up. Um, I like to use my overlock, so I'll be sewing this at a quarter of an inch so that I'm not cutting anything off, but the edge will be in the overlock machine. You can certainly use the straight stitch if you're with it being stabilized. I'm just doing kind of a quick, quick basting to keep it from stretching. And my phone's going off again. Doesn't help that I'm during it's during work hours. And remember, if we do a terrible job basting, we can always remove them after we sew it. But I think that they'll be covered, so it won't make a difference. And you can see that we're making sure that nothing stretches out of place. And this will also, we can remove the other pins underneath it. But yeah, maybe the... Ow, keep stabbing myself. My 
cat is circling. He may be up here momentarily. Of course, I've got a big mess on this table, so I'm not sure if you will. Okay, so we got that side good. And then we can actually remove all those pins underneath. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to kind of do like a little bubble in here and then line up the other side. You can see that everything kind of the two, uh, oh, I'm bleeding because <laughs> I did stab myself. Reason why I don't zoom in too close so you can, can't see the blood. So now I'm going to get this, and uh, that's too small because I like to. The other one I had no problem threading. We'll see if I. Because this is one of those real tiny ones. Oh, went right through the hole. Ugh, come on. Okay, and I'm just going to come on the other side and do the same thing. And I just realized that we can't really go, I'm going to have to revise this. Um, we won't be able to do a 3 8, 7 inch strap because we won't be able to do the overlap the same way. So see, it may just be, the smallest would probably be a half an inch knowing how we have to go together. I really have a knot in there. And it doesn't take long, otherwise, you know, I've gone and I've sewn it together, then I've had to seam rip the overlock stitch because they twist. And this should keep it from twisting in the machine because it forces them to go in evenly. Okay, basting is done for both sides. So if we look at it, we've got kind of this little bubble of fabric in the inside. And what this is gonna end up doing is once we sew the, those pieces together, it's gonna end up be becoming that wrap around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do my other piece, get this one all prepped the same way, and then I will meet you back at the sewing machine. So now I'm going to go in, I'm just going to sew so the edge is on, being overlocked so we're not trimming anything off. I'm going to make sure there's no, the fabric is not overlapping, but the basting stitch should help a fair amount. machine is trying to stretch my fabric, but it's not letting it because I basted it. Now, because 
because we did stabilize this first, you could have sewn it on the straight stitch machine. I just did it on the overlock because I like to sew most of my sports bras completely with the overlock. And I'll catch you back on the table. So in order to um, get these turned right side out, you're going to need a loop turner. But before I do that, I actually want to get my basting stitches taken out because um, I can still see them. the best I'm going to get right this second. I may go, have to go again. So I'm going to take my loop turner and go through the hole and grab onto something and work on trying to pull that through. Yep. And you might lose it. So and I'm going between the purple and the black layer, not between the foam and the black, because then it will be on the wrong side and I messed up again. I'm going to try and do this from this end. Sometimes if you grab onto the stitches themselves, it might be easier. Of course, use a safety pin. That also works. Okay, we got that out. Okay, there we go. Looks nice. I've got some little stitches in there I can take out. So. Still did a little bit of twisting, but not as bad since you know, I've got three layers in here, which can sometimes be a little difficult. There we go. <clears throat> I think that one looked a lot better. So now there is a particular order you're going to need to go through in order to get the, ugh, come on, to get the strap assembled right. And so I'm using a five millimeter, or sorry, 15 millimeter, or about um, five eighths of an inch. Cut that off. And the first thing we're going to have to do is we are, where are my slides? We need to attach the slide to the strap. So we're looping it. So I've got the shiny side facing. And I'm just going to stick a pin in there. Actually, I want to have it maybe about, about three quarters of an inch, about 20 millimeters overlapped. So it's kind of held in place right there. So again, shiny up through the middle, down through there. And then we want to have it so it's overlapped by the same amount on both sides. And then we're going to end up going to the sewing machine. Um, so we also will need to do, because of the slide, goes in. Oh, we have plenty of time to do that one. Okay, so I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch this and then stitch this just with a straight little back stitch on both of them and then we'll be right back over here. I don't think I need to do this on the sewing machine plus it's black on black so it's going to be hard to see so I will be right back with those stitch closed. Okay, so I have my shiny sides face up. I've got the rough side facing down. Now what we need to do is we actually need to loop this, put this through the ring. So shiny side going through the ring. And then we're gonna take, and so we got that ring hanging there. And then we're gonna go up through the one side and back down. 
down to the other side. So we have that little loop. Again, I'll show you again through the ring. So actually, if you want to use a smaller strap, you just need a big, big enough ring that it'll work for this. So we've got that ring there. It's going to assemble through there and then come back down through the other side. It might be a little bit difficult because of the black on black. But that is, that's that. Okay, so now this piece, well, we need to be able to slide, go through this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and we can fold this down by about a half an inch, so that way you make sure that you're maybe five eighths of an inch. And then though, you can do is you can just do a straight stitch or you can zigzag. It'll kind of come through the other side um, so you'll have that finished edge. So you can see what we're doing. So is that right? Is that right? Nope, I got it wrong. Got it backwards. Have it so it's this way. So we see that black strip or the contrast strip facing up and you've got that slide on the top side. And you fold it back this way, and where did I just put my, that pin? Okay. So we have it this way. Come clean up my tip. It's like that. Pull it over, make sure you got the same amount of overlap you did on the other one. And then you can either go in and straight stitch or do a little zigzag. So I am gonna go ahead and work on that part and I will be right back. Okay, so I have just did a straight stitch. I actually did a zigzag and it looked absolutely terrible um, on this fabric. My machine was not happy with how I did that. So I ended up going back with a straight stitch. Now you could easily, um, finish this edge, kind of try to clean finish that edge prior to sewing it down, um, and then just st stitch it down with a straight stitch. And it'll look, to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay. Okay, so now once we have that, then we're gonna take and put the slide through, through one side of the slide. So with the black side kind of going towards the middle And then this will be how that strap can be adjusted. So I'm going to take and then this, I'm going to actually go in and stitch this piece down right here. Then as it's worn, you can take and you can shorten it or you can lengthen it to give you more space on the strap. There you go. So it's an adjustable strap with a little with a little twist. So it gives you about two inches of extra movement in here. And if you actually do need to have it probably a little bit shorter, well we can remove a little bit off. I'm going to take and line that up to the end. And this is the part that gets attached to the back, and this is the part that gets attached to the front. So again, I'll do that. And then we get this. So the black side goes towards the center on the big slide. And then we take and we line that up here. And then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to, I'm going to do a back stitch right here. I don't need to show that. I'm going to do a back stitch on both sides and then the strap is completely ready to be attached to the garment. So you can do this before you sew everything, you can do this after you sew everything. I like to do this first, that way we've got kind of my tricky little strap contra contraction contraption finished.